Today we are finishing the series. We're going to spend a few minutes at the end of a, of a sermon uh, just praying specifically for relationships. But I have a question for you. I have a question for you. And so this is, a, again, the time when we get to talk to one with another. And, and I want to ask, it's a simple mathematical question. It's a number. How many of your friends would you entrust with your wallet? How many have 10 friends that you can share your wallet with? 10 friends. Ah, my coffee. Is that your chama? Because you're already sharing your wallet with already. Okay, nine friends. Okay, above 10 friends. Okay, we have, yeah, we have one or two people. Well, yes? Oh, it's the ladies. They don't have wallets. Okay, so your wallet doesn't have anything. It's your pastor that has everything. Okay, that's fine. I, you know, I can handle that. Nine friends. Eight friends. Oh, very good. Well done. Well done. Is that also, is that your life group? Oh, it's the life group. Yay! I want to be part of that life group. But I'm going to have to disclose also, eh? <laughs> okay. Uh, seven friends. Six friends. Oh, six. We have six. Oh, very good. Five, five friends. Very good. Well done. Baraka, well done. Well done. Four friends. Okay, I'm with Pastor Kev over here. Uh huh. That's good. Three friends. Yeah, yeah, most of us. Yeah. Uh, two friends. The introverts here. Yeah. One friend. <laughs> okay. This is the moment of truth we've all been waiting for. No one. They're there. It's true. It's true. It's hard to share our lives with many people. It's not easy to share the, your most precious thing. And I chose the wallet because the wallet is something that, uh, that is not often shared. Uh, there are not many songs about sharing your wallet. There are not many books you can read about sharing your wallet. Uh, if you look at, if you look at, uh, at self-help books... There are self-help books about how to make yourself popular. There are self-help books about how to, um, how to get a job, how to win the lottery. There are you know, books about everything. No books about how to share the most precious thing in your life. None. No songs written about it. Uh, in Wakanda, they don't share those things. That's, that's just how it is, isn't it? But not very easy to entrust the most precious thing in your life with many people. It is for this reason that you find it's harder even for people to entrust not just their wallet, but their, but their hearts. Friendships or deep friendships are, are difficult uh, because of, of, of the lack of trust that we have one for another. Sharing the most important thing in your life depends on what your friendship is founded on. When I look at television, when I look at, at movies, uh, um, when, I, when I look at, uh, at, at, um, at novels, uh, there are certain things that emerge that tend to be the ones that relationships are founded, are founded upon. Uh, and, and I'll sort of explain them and illustrate them with some songs that we, all, that we all know or that many of us know. The first one is that people tend to base their relationships on, on, uh, on good feelings. I, I build my friendship with so-and-so because when I'm there with them, the song says, it feels so right. It feels, it feels good. In fact, God is the one who gave us the capacity for, uh, for, for good feelings and enjoying, you know, enjoying feelings one with another. But fe and feelings tend to form a very major part of how we found our, our, our relationships together. Someone once wrote a song and said, Sijui tunapokwenda, lakini najua tulipo. Toka. Kutoka sitoki ni mete kwanyara. I have been what? What is te kwanyara? I've been kidnapped. Kukuacha siwezi kibarua ngumu. Na shindwa nini uh, nitafanya uridhike. Ni mete kwandani ya mtandao wa mapenzi. Okay, how do you say that in English? I have been captured in the web of love. You know? Eh, and so and so basi na, na kuomba uniteke bila mateso tazama nimezama dania diwezi kusonga mbe 
Yuma. You forgot to say hi bye. <laughs> feelings. Feelings. Feelings, strong feelings, isn't it? We tend to found our relationships on feelings. But I never met anyone who shared their wallet with someone because of the feelings, good feelings that they had with. Difficult to entrust the most important thing in your life based on feelings, isn't it? But there is another thing. Looks, we pursue, you know, just a good feeling because when I look at you, man, you know, you're just so, what is the term? You know, fill in the blank in your head. Yeah, we, bu we build relationships based on how someone looks. How someone looks is an important, is an important part of my, my, my engagement with them. You know, you look so good that I enjoy looking at you and somehow being together with you is an upgrade on how I look. Uh, I looked for a song about, about, uh, about qualities. Qualities. Uh, qualities of, of the best, uh, uh, you know, best qualities of someone to have a relationship with. And I found one by Major. In fact, it's called Quality Kahizo. I cannot show you the video because uh, this space has certain rules about how we view these things. But Major featuring Pizzo Dizzo. Major fe featuring Pizzo Dizzo has a list of qualities for the man and for the for the woman. Manzika Huyo. And those qualities it starts very well, you know, someone who is serious and what. Then after that, 95% of the qualities has to do with he dresses well, he looks good, you know, he, this is how he handles himself, or this is how she handles herself. Quality kaizo. I never met anyone who shared their wallet with anybody based on how they look. Difficult to share the most important thing in your life based on how someone looks. There's another one. There's another one. Uh, people base their relationships on how, you know, on, on, what do you say, ease of use. The user interface is easy or new. There's another way to say, to say that, convenience. You know, I, I met a number of people who say, well, you know, it's just convenient to be in relationship together with you. Convenient to be, uh, uh, to be in, a, a, in, a, in a friendship with you, convenient to be in a, a romantic relationship with you, uh, because, you know, it's, you know, we work together, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we moved in because it just made economic sense, and we're just thinking paying you, paying rent, me paying rent. Aki, you know, it's just a waste of money. See, we can just... You know, moving together. And then, people live and build their life, their romantic life together based on convenience. Because being with you makes it easier for me not to be something else or, some, or, or makes it easier for me not to be uh, in a certain situation or it just, you know, makes life a little bit easier. Uh, I, here's another, uh, another song. Uh, Willie Paul did a collab a collabo with Alain. And he wrote a song which we play in our weddings. And it's called... I do. Baby, but that song. Baby, yeah, I do. I do has three verses. And I'm going to let Willie Paul say it for you. Verse three says, I used to lie to myself that I, I can always be a player like the bunch. This is verse three of the song we play in our weddings. Eh? This is the guy saying, I used to lie to myself that I can always be a player like the bunch. When I saw you, my heart skipped a bit and my whole life changed. You are my sweet, you are my sweet pie, apple of my heart, my sweet angel, my oxygen. So now I don't have to go following all the other women. So now uh, I, cannot, I don't need to be a player like the bunch because you, you are there. When I saw you, 
my heart skipped a bit. If you are not there, I'd still be. And we play that song for our weddings, you know, walking in. And the pastor is waiting for you over there, Pastor Kiyama is over. Convenience. Convenience. The things we go through, Pastor Emmanuel. <laughs> Maybe I, should ban, maybe I should ban that song for, for weddings that I conduct. I don't know. Maybe you just white out that line, eh? You need to white out that line. And then after that, you say, I do, I do, I do, I do. That, anyway, we based our relationship. I never met anyone who shared the most precious thing in their life based on convenience. Based on con con convenience. Unfortunately, those are the attributes that are, uh, are brought about and they're lifted up as the most important attributes in relationships. And we entrust our hearts, something that's way more precious than your wallet, we entrust our hearts to someone based on those three things. The question then must be, you know, if we cannot, if we shouldn't trust and trust our hearts uh, based on these things, what should we do? Now don't get me wrong, I think it is nice to have good feelings when you're with someone. God created that capacity in us to have good, warm, fuzzy feelings for one another. That's a good thing. It's good to have someone who looks decent when you're together. Someone who looks attractive when you're together. I think it is good for your relationship to make things more convenient in one way or another. But those are not the things that we are to base our relationship on. There are things, there are things that are deeper, or there's something that is deeper than that, something that we can then be able to base uh, our relationships on. What is that thing that we would recommend to someone who's saying, well, uh, you know, I want to entrust my heart to someone. What is that one thing that I must pursue? What is that thing that is so valuable that I should give up everything uh, to, to be able to do it? Uh, and to be able to build a lasting relationship that I can entrust my heart uh, to someone. And I think for us, the answer to that question is found in Scripture. And in, and in God's Word, where we find God's template of His relationship with His people. And in that template, we find in Scripture, the whole of it, from the Old to the, to the New Testament, we find God choosing to relate to his, to his creation in a way, in a creation that He had created, that was lower than Him. God choosing to relate with them on the basis of love. God choosing to bless and increase the earth through Abraham and his offspring, broken people, people who are imperfect. Uh, God choosing, uh, uh, choosing to uh, illustrate uh, his relationship with his people through a, a prophet whose wife was unfaithful to him. God sending his most precious thing, his son, to come and die on the cross for, uh, for us. We don't see looks featuring or feelings featuring we don't see convenience being the basis of that relationship. What we see in that relationship is commitment. One, one unspoken weakness of our time is our ability to recognize how some of the things that we base our friendships on are so trivial in certain ways. If you are given something that was very, very precious and you are told, you know, base you know, give this thing to someone on the basis of some of the things that we base our relationships on, uh, it would not hold. But as we look at the God's relationship with us, we can learn that commitment is that thing that can help us uh, to build firm, strong foundations that can become an, an, uh, uh, an example for us within uh, our relationships. God is committed to us. He has demonstrated that by sending his son to come and die on the cross on our behalf. That's what the next month we are going to be talking uh, about. I want us to turn to a scripture, a Philippians, if you have your Bible, to Philippians, Philippians chapter 2. And I want us to take some, some, some uh, nuggets of truth from that uh, account. Philippians chapter 2, um, the first part, is really a summary of God's commitment to us as his people. Therefore, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, 
Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and and being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset. Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Our Father, we pray that in the next few minutes, as we talk about what it means to have commitment in our relationships, I pray that our minds will be clear, our thoughts uh, would be aligned with your thoughts, and that we draw something out of our time today that will glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 2, be like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Like-mindedness or agreement is a powerful thing in the context of relationships. Any relationship, any romantic relationship, any marriage that is able to develop agreement, is able to develop a common understanding, can achieve a lot. Genesis chapter 11 verse 6, uh, the God himself speaking about, about uh, the, the, the people uh, in, in Babel, he said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible. There's something extremely powerful about building agreement in the context of, of relationships. When we have the same values, we have the same, you know, we have common grounds, we build a relationship that can stand the test of time. Relationships that last the longest are relationships where people are able to find agreement one with another. Now, you need to get me. Uh, you don't come together because, you know, you already agreed. Human beings are such that you come from a different background, I come from a different background, and when we come together, we have to build agreement together. Agreement is not something that just happens you know, just by itself. It's something that you work towards. An important element of commitment, but it is something that we have to work towards. It means when you come in, you know, I'm dating my, my girlfriend, you know, you, uh, and, and, and we sit together with, with, with my girlfriend. When we, when we sit down and we talk about the things that we love, and there are many things that we love, you know, uh, we have to agree where we want to go. We have to agree whether, you know, if you're an Arsenal fan, I'm a Manchester United fan, we have to come to some sort of understanding how the remote control will be distributed. You know, we, we, have, to, you know, we have to agree about some of those things, the menial things, but also the deep things. Building a common understanding. How are we going to use our money together? Uh, how are we going to share the resources that we have? How are we going to divide the time and make it useful for ourselves? When it comes to children, what are we going to do with our children? How are we going to build uh, um, a, a home together? Uh, we, we build agreement on things together. You know, when, 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 I, when we're dating with, uh, uh, with, with my good wife, um, we, you know, she came up with a plan and we were, we were, we were trying to get married. Uh, and like I said a couple of weeks ago, it's very expensive to get married in this country and has been for a while. And it was the same, you know, 18 years ago. And so, you know, we sat down and we began talking about how we would be able to, uh, to, to work through this together. And so we began saving together. And I noticed a very interesting thing. Our saving together was synergetic. Remember what synergy is? Synergy is when, you know, one plus one the total of that is something a little more than two. It's something that, that, that is very powerful when we agree together and begin to save together. So anyway, if I, whatever I was saving and there was two of me and we put that money together would have been less that, than what we ended up saving together. Now we weren't living together in case you may be wondering in your mind. So we didn't save from, from rent. Uh, but something about people who are agreed together 
enables people to find solutions and to be able to accomplish way more than if you're separate. Agreement, like-mindedness as a pillar of, 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 of commitment. But the other thing, in verse 3, Jesus says, you know, Jesus says, do nothing. Uh, the po Apostle Paul writing to, uh, to the Philippians uh, teaches us and says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Let's read that other part. Rather, let's read it together. Rather, in humility, value others above your, yourselves. Few things can empower a relationship more than viewing the other person as being more important in the relationship. I think it's today's newspaper. I saw, I, I, I saw an, an article in The Nation. And, and, you know, in that article, it says, you know, here are five ways to love yourself. Somehow in our world, we, are, we, condi we condition ourselves uh, to, to love ourselves, to put ourselves above the other person because you never know what the other person is going to do to you. And so you want, to, you, you want to love yourself because it's never guaranteed that that other person over there has, has your best interests at heart. And so there, you know, there are books about loving yourself. There are programs that you can go to that, uh, that put you above everyone else. Uh, there, there are some, some, uh, uh, um, some service providers will... will Give special services for you to go and do your own pedicure just so that you can be at the top of your list of the most important people in your life. What is, what is the Apostle Paul saying? The Apostle Paul is saying, you know, in humility value others above yourselves. Very refreshing when someone comes, uh, to, uh, when, when someone is able to put you before themselves in a relationship. Sometimes it's almost like a reverse thing. I begin to feel beholden to that person. When I'm so important in someone's life, or someone demonstrates to me that, that I'm so important in their life, it puts them in a special place in, in my life. The Apostle Paul is saying, you know, it's important for us to value others above ourselves. And it's natural, it's human to to consider yourself, to want to protect yourself, to want to, to hold off everyone on the other side, and to want the best for yourself. How many conversations have I been and someone says, look, I need to aspire for a lot for myself. People who don't aspire a lot for, for themselves don't, get, uh, uh, don't achieve much uh, in their own lives. I need to aspire for a high standard for my relationships. Can I talk to the ladies for a moment? Okay, gentlemen, can I talk to the ladies for a moment? <laughs> You're tracking with me. Ladies, is it okay for me to talk with you? Yeah, let me, let, last week I talked to the guys. Here's the thing. I think it's good to aspire for a good, for a good relationship, for someone who's going to cook for you, for someone who's, you know, going to care for the family, someone who's, you know, going to pay for you to live in a good neighborhood, someone who's going to wear Pia Kadin and smell like Old Spice. It's good to have that, isn't it? And it's good to have all of that before you make a commitment, isn't it? But here's the thing. The gentlemen who wear Pierre Cardin are sensitive, are, you know, can cook for, 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 for you or hire a chef to cook for you in your house who drive a certain kind of car that helps you to have a good time traveling in Kenyan roads, those kinds of guys are older guys and generally tend to be the end product of another lady's hard work. Are we together? I just want to be honest here. Gentlemen, just close your ears for a moment. This one is not for you. This one is for? For the ladies. And so, I think it is helpful for our sisters, for those of us who are aspiring for a good relationship, uh, to take a step back 
and in humility consider the possibility of working with potential so that so that after 10 years everyone else can be marveling at the at the handsome well groomed you know well spoken and well to do gentleman in your life are we together these people don't grow on trees they are the product of hard work i have to say i think i dress reasonably this is the result of 17 years of hard work by one or boy when she found where she found me where she found me i was not in a good place <laughs> i was not I, I was very, you know, I, I had not cooked for people in my life. I love cooking. I had not cooked for cook. I, I did not know how to dress. I did not know how to buy shoes. All of that has been added onto, onto me. And I don't think I'm going to have a heart attack soon because she manages the, the diet so that I'm able to live well. And as a result, you know, I thank God for where I am right now. So ladies, it requires a little bit of humility to think like that. I just want to be honest. With a little bit of humility, if the man works hard and doesn't have that VX, that's okay. It's going to come. If the man respects his extended family, if the, if the man respects the women in his office, guess who he's going to respect most? You. If the person, you know, comes to church and is trying to live a good life, Ten years down the line, he'll be the spiritual giant you are seeking after. Not all men are born pastors to be able to give you spiritual direction. Give him some time, a little bit of time. Then it will become easier for that man to commit when he sees at least he's been given a chance. Are we together, gentlemen? Have I said something that is helpful there? Yeah, so, so anyway, that's, that's for the ladies. This is, what, this is what the Apostle Paul says. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility value others above yourselves. I'll talk about uh, men's commitment, commitment for beer a little bit later. In fact, I'll pray for it. As guys, we have a problem with, with making that commitment. I agree. Uh, but I'm also saying that uh, I think it's a two-way thing where we also are able to build one another up. Third thing. Agreement, humility, the third thing, and this is really the most critical. This is like the foundation stone. Uh, this is, the, this is the, the crux of the matter. It says in verse 5, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. In fact, let's read that together. In your relationships with one another, Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, uh, something to be used for his own advantage. These kinds of relationships cannot be developed without external help, without an external uh, assistance. Left to ourselves, left to myself, I am bound to be selfish. Left to myself, I am bound to be influenced by people's looks. Left to myself, I want things that are convenient and easy for myself. We need to be deliberate in inviting Jesus in our own lives and having a mindset like that is directed, controlled, uh, completely submitted uh, to Christ. How do I submit my mindset to Christ? How do I become Christ-centered in my life? Through prayer. Now, it doesn't matter whether you've been in church for 10 years or, or, you know, all your life or this was your first day to come to church today. I think having a conversation with God and saying, look, I don't know. I need you to hold my hand and help me. Goes a long way in, in, in inviting Christ to be the center of our relationships. Learning about Christ-like values. Finding a space like this one where every Sunday we come together and for a few minutes we, we talk together about what it means for us to be, uh, to be followers of Christ. When we get into romantic relationships and we want to get married, coming into a space where we learn together about the values of relationship and saying, look, we don't know, are there godly principles, are there Christ-centered principles that can help us to learn to, 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 learn to become more Christ-centered in our relationships? 
getting into life groups where we can share our lives and like our friends over here, share our wallets one with another. Places where we can come and open up our hearts and allow for godly values to be uh, put inside. Christ-centered. Agreement, like developing a like-mindedness, humility, and being Christ-centered. How do we pursue co this kind of commitment? Commitment with these three facets in our lives. Here are some practical pointers. As you date, you know, how about starting with a, with a place where, where you begin with a, a desire to agree together, where you begin with a commitment to build a common understanding with each other. Find someone with whom you can begin to align your, your values together. Someone who you can challenge one another to have values that are not just about looks. I mean, looks are good and, and, and you know, feelings are good. But someone with whom you can agree together on some fundamental things. With your friends, be a committed person. Don't be that person who, uh, you know, is a fair weather friend or someone who is a friend just because, uh, you know, you're a friend in need. Be that friend who comes through for people when they are in need. And here's what I, what I want to talk to, to gentlemen. When you find that lady and you know that she's the one, make the commitment. Put, put, put your foot in, put your, you know, put your money down. Don't be a slave to fear. Put your money down and make the commitment. In your workplace, be that person who is committed. Begin to practice in your workplace. Practice in your workplace what it means to be committed. Putting the other person ahead, ahead of, of, of you. In your workplace, serving other people's needs. In your workplace, being Christ-centered and standing for godly values. With your family, be committed when it comes to, uh, to achieving the well-being of your family. Commit yourself to be present. Commit yourself to do everything that it takes for your children, for your, uh, for your spouse, uh, to, to be everything that God intends for them to be. For those of us who are parents, make a commitment and say, look, I'm going to do everything it takes for me to be a good parent. If, if there's a layer experience, uh, the 10-week experience we have for us to, uh, to learn to become better parents. You know, sign up for that. Make that commitment and say, I'm going to commit myself to something that's going to make me everything uh, that God needs me to be uh, for now. Many relationships are based on feelings, based on convenience, based on looks. Those things are gifts from God but they cannot be the foundation of our relationship. God wants more for us. God desires more for us. He wants relationships that are strong and that are founded on commitment in the same way that he himself has committed to us. I want to take a few minutes to pray. I'm going to pray for several of us um, in different different. Uh, uh, places of relate, relating with this message. And some of us who, who may fear, uh, who, who fear commitment, and with good reason, with good reason, maybe, maybe you know, it's hard to, to submit your life uh, to someone else after you've lived it for yourself. Maybe you've been dating for a long time and uh, just taking that extra step has been just you know, difficult. And it's probably because of disappointments. People disappointed you in the past and you're sort of now bringing this into, uh, into this relationship. Maybe it's betrayal. Maybe it's a, a broken engagement. Probably it's, it's a, someone did not fulfill their, 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 their commitment. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's, maybe it's with you or with me. You have expectations that are so high that they're difficult to achieve or unrealistic altogether. Perhaps as you listen to me, and as you listen to me in the last few weeks, your thought has been, you know, Pastor K, I've listened to you, 
everything you say makes so much sense to me, but look, I failed. I didn't do it right the first time round. And all this stuff you're talking about, I mean, I'm, I'm not starting from zero. I'm starting from like minus five. And I need to get back to zero, then we can start. Okay. No, I think, I think God, God, our God is a God of a second chance. God is able to give us a fresh start. That's what the cross is about. It's about a fresh start. I also want for us to pray for people who are in relationship or who would like to be in relationship. This is a place that we can be authentic and real with one another and say, look, I feel ready for relationship now. All that stuff you've said, yeah, that's good, but I feel ready for relationship now. And I, I want to pray for that because every, every gift, every good gift, scripture tells me, is from the Father of lights, it's from God. We cannot demand it of Him, but at least we can ask Him. And I want to pray for marriages here. Marriages are under siege. It's hard. It's, it's hard for two people from different backgrounds to live together and make a home together. But God requires of us to live according to His example of commitment. Not easy to do, but He's present to help us. So I want, I want us to you know, pray for yourself. All those are different things. I want to pray. I'm going to pray for them uh, in a moment. But pray for yourself first, even as we prepare to pray together. Let's just take a minute. And, and just pray. I believe that God wants for you only the best. His desire for you is life and life in abundance. And I think we should want for ourselves what God wants for us, which is nothing but the best. Pray. Take a moment and talk to God. Jesus' name, I want to pray for the things that I've talked about today. I pray for someone here that has struggled with making a commitment in relationship because of a disappointment that they have experienced. Oh God, I pray for healing. Heal their hearts, oh God. And strengthen them, oh God, to be able to make, to build relationships that are founded on commitment. If you're here and you've been disappointed by someone and that makes it hard for you to hard for you to, to build relationships and to make commitments, I want to pray for you and if that's you, just raise up your hand and allow me to just pray uh, for you and for us to unite our faith together to believe God for healing. Father, I pray for every hand that is raised and for every heart that is represented. I'm praying for healing in the deepest parts 
I pray, Lord, for healing for the pain. I pray for strength to rise up out of this and to enable them, oh God, to relate and to build commitment. First with friends around, but then I pray and ask, oh God, that when that romantic relationship comes, oh God, I pray that your healing will prevail. I thank you, God, because you promised us that by your stripes we are healed. And I pray that by the stripes of Jesus who we celebrate, there will be healing in, the, in these lives. And you can put your hands down. For someone else over here that, like me, struggles with expectations, I have such high expectations of people close to my life that sometimes that affects the relationships that I'm with. If that's you again, just raise up your hand and allow me to pray. Father, I want to pray for these friends and I want to pray, oh God, that you'd help us, oh God, to be humble. And like you say in Philippians 2 and verse 3, help us not to do anything out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Help us, oh God, not to do anything out of our own selfish expectations of others. But rather in humility, oh God, I pray that you help us to value others above ourselves. Help us to moderate our expectations with your love and with your grace for us. Help us, oh God. We need you, oh God. Work within our lives. In Jesus' name. And I want to pray for others over here that you know, as I, as I speak, you failed God. And you may have failed others. You didn't come through for them. You didn't have the kind of commitment that God requires of you. Scripture tells us that uh, we are to confess our sins to one another that we may find healing. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just and will forgive us and cleanse us from our righteousness. Let's take a moment now and just pray. If that's you, you know that you may have failed someone else or even failed God. I want to pray over you. And I want to pray for a fresh start for you. Again, just raise up your hand and allow me to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name. We have failed you in our lives. And we failed you in our relationships. Have mercy on us, O God. Cleanse us, O God, when we didn't come through for someone that we should have come through for. Have mercy on us, O God, where we didn't walk aright with you. Return us to a place of relationship with us. Restore a right relationship with us. Do not take your spirit away from us, but bring us into fellowship with you. I thank you for your forgiveness. Have mercy on us and cleanse us, O oh God. And help us, O oh God, to start afresh. In Jesus' name. And finally, I want to pray for relationships. Father, we've talked about romantic relationships. And for my brother, for my sister, their hearts resonate with this sermon series. And they say, Lord, give me that opportunity to be in romantic relationship with someone. Lord, I pray. I pray and I ask, oh God, that you would answer their deepest longings, their deepest prayers. In Psalms, you say that we should delight ourselves in you and you'll give us the desires of our hearts. Help us, oh God, to delight ourselves in you, to be found in you, even as you build the romantic relationships around us. And Father, I pray that these things we've talked about will be things that will apply in our lives. In Jesus' name. I want to pray for the marriages here, Father. For every person under the sound of my voice that is married. I want to pray for thriving marriages that reflect the values that we've talked about this month. Lord, we choose your way. We choose your values. We want you, oh God, to take charge within our lives. And that our lives would honor you and glorify you in our marriages. Help us, oh God, to live for the standards that you call us for and to have the kind of relationships that you want of us.